Excellencies, uh, distinguished uh, leaders uh, in the Pacific, ladies and gentlemen, Kasselelie, I bring you warm greetings from our uh, paradise in our backyard, uh, directly from our capital, Palikir, but the United States of Micronesia. I thank you all. It's good to see all of you uh, gathering uh, today for this very important uh, uh, topic that we'll be uh, discussing. Allow me at first to convey my personal appreciation to the Director General of the Pacific Community, uh, Dr. Stuart Minchin, for inviting me to address this high level dialogue. I am very pleased and honored with this invitation, knowing that Micronesia's important progress and practical experiences in the process of securing our maritime boundaries are informative to the Pacific. There is no question, my dear friends and colleagues, about the urgency of concluding our maritime boundaries in light of the overwhelming threats posed by climate change and the devastating impacts upon our fragile island environment. Securing the survival of the blue continent for our children and the future generations of the Pacific people is our mission. I also take this opportunity to acknowledge the remarks made by the Pacific Ocean Commissioner, Dr. Henry Puna, the Honorable Henry Puna, and the Director General of the uh, Forum Fisheries Agency, FFA, Dr. Manu Tupo Rosen, and all the distinguished and honored guests present at this high level virtual dialogue. Excellencies, as a big ocean state of highly dispersed islands, many of which are low lying, it is a fact that, like many other island nations in the Pacific, and around the world, the Federated States of Micronesia is grappling with the devastating adverse effects of sea level rise. Yet the irony is that FSM contributed very little to the overall global greenhouse gas emissions, just like many other ocean countries in the Pacific. The FSM is home to some of the richest biodiversity in the world, including extremely rich fisheries resources. Our duty is to protect our ocean resources, being the backbone of our livelihood, economic development, and environmental stability. The famous Challenger Deep in the Marianas Trench is located in our exclusive economic zone, as most of you are well aware of. Another world leading depth of approximately 8,946 meters below sea level, officially named as the Yap World's Deep, is located in the territorial sea along the Yap Trench. Yap is one of the states in the Federated States of Micronesia. With rich ocean resources, highly dispersed and low-lying highlands, just like everyone in this forum, the FSM is facing the overwhelming challenges of associated challenges associated with sea level rise, maritime security, and the stability of our maritime borders are critical. Hence. Our ultimate goal is to secure our maritime borders and to maintain the stability, security, certainty, and predictability of our marine zones, along with the preservation of the rights and entitlements that flow from those maritime zones according to the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea or on close. A fully delineated maritime boundary means not only certainty and security, it also means that potential disputes with neighboring countries are substantially reduced. We have completed 
the negotiations of our maritime boundaries concluded them and ratified all such delimitation treaties, the FSM also promulgated a national regulation that sets out all the official coordinates of our baselines, territorial waters, and exclusive economic zone. We incorporated in the regulation the boundary delimitation lines that we negotiated with the United States, the Republic of Palau, the independent state of Papua New Guinea, and the Republic of the Marshall Islands. We also registered and deposited our official baselines and complete information on the outer limits of our maritime zones, including the legislation and regulation for those baselines and zones, as well as our maritime boundary delimitation treaties with the UN Secretariat via the uh, TOLOS and the United Nations Treaty section in New York, making them official and internationally recognized. In our deposit of maritime zone, information with the UN Secretary General via the UN Talos, we also provided a set of accompanying observations addressing our views with respect to the relationship between sea level rise and our maritime zones. The FSM informed the UN Secretary General and in effect, the whole world, given that this official deposit is, a, is accorded global publicity. The FSM's view is that it is not obligated to keep under review the maritime zones reflected in the present official deposit, notwithstanding climate change induced sea level rise. All the efforts so far produced positive results because of the commitment and dedication of our national team, the SPC and its consortium partners, Geoscience Australia, Australian Attorney General's Department, FFA, Crit Arendal, Commonwealth Secretariat, and the University of Sydney that had been providing technical and legal support since 2002. Very importantly, the collective foresightedness of the leaders involved agreeing in principle to collaborate the island way and in good faith paved the way for the successful conclusion of our maritime boundary delimitation treaties with the need for any complicated negotiations without the need for any complicated negotiations. This approach served us well and reminded us of the continued importance and relevance of the traditional relationship between the highlands and our shared steward of the oceans. We continue to work on the extended continental shelf projects and seek the continued support of SPC and the consortium partners. I would also like to take this opportunity to recognize and to commend the Pacific leaders for our collective declaration on preserving maritime zones in the face of climate change related sea level rise, which the leaders of the Pacific Islands Forum endorsed in August this year, and which was later reaffirmed by the Micronesian President Summit. As we expressed ourselves in solidarity with each other, our collective views in that declaration on preserving maritime zones in the face of climate change related sea level rise, it is my hope that the landmark normative declaration will serve its purpose of clarifying our interpretation as a region of the relevant international law pertaining to the relationship between climate change related sea level rise and maritime zones as supported by the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea and the legal principles underpinning it. Excellencies, 
In addition to our maritime boundary projects, the FSM also invested in several extended continental shelf projects with respect to the surrounding high seas pockets, which could extend sovereign rights upon the seabed up to 350 nautical miles limit, according to the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea. At the moment, there are four areas of our extended continental shelf projects, if I may share, three of which were already filed with the Commission on the Limits of the Continental Shelf. The joint submission for the on, on Tong uh, Java Plateau with a total area of uh, over 600,000 square kilometers is a collaboration between FSM, PNG, and the Solomon Islands. This is the first joint extended continental shelf submission in the Pacific that the commission has recommended so far. The examination process took place from 2014 up to 2017 with 14 weeks of meetings of the subcommission, 13 meetings and consultation with the three submitting states, nine presentations by the submitting delegations and eight presentations by the subcommission in the course of the examination. So this is a very substantial work that we have accomplished over the a decade and a half. And uh, I, I want to congratulate for to congratulate all of those who have put the effort in helping our country achieve these efforts. Another extended continental shelf area of the FSM is the Eurobic Rice, as some of you are aware, approximately 175,000 square kilometers, which was lodged with the commission in 2013. This submission is awaiting the establishment of a sub-commission to examine it. Indonesia and PNG are interested in the same area as well. Another area of interest to the FSM is the Muso Ridge, approximately 14,000 square kilometers, which is a subject of a preliminary information presentation requiring further work and acquisition of supporting data. Recently, we have completed the main body for another extended continental shelf submission for the north for, for the north of Yap area. We consulted with Palau and Japan, and we will launch the submission with the commission very soon. Excellencies, friends, it is clear from our national experiences that we need to keep our national law updated with these recent developments that I have just described. FSM must be prepared to domesticate its assertion of sovereign rights through legislation covering one, sovereign rights over the exploration and exploitation of, nat na of natural resources, two, exclusive rights to authorize and regulate drilling on the continental shelf for all purposes. Three, exclusive rights to construct, authorize, and regulate the construction, operation, and use of artificial islands, installations, and structures. Four, jurisdiction with respect to protection, and preservation of the marine environment. And five, the right to regulate, authorize, and conduct marine scientific research. We will continue to make progress in our maritime boundaries, and we are willing to share our experiences and best practices to our brothers and sisters in the Pacific region anytime. In closing, my dear friends, I wish to leave you with this message. The future of the Pacific is full of difficult challenges caused by many factors, including, of course,
climate change. Fortunately, the challenges themselves also present to us great opportunities for innovation. I am pleased to note our active involvement in the ongoing study by the International Law Commission in the area of sea level rise in relation to international law, the PPNJ negotiations, and also our negotiations with the important work of the Sixth Committee of the United Nations. We continue to pursue these important issues on the various international forums, including those that I have mentioned. We owe it to future generations in our nation and throughout the entire Pacific and the world to preserve our fragile environment and resources in a nurturing condition that would also ensure their survival. What we do today will be our prosperity tomorrow, as I've always proclaimed. Before I conclude, I want to introduce uh, two individuals who will be participating in this virtual dialogue actively, and that is Matt to Chikil, who is our deputy executive director of our NORMA, or the National Oceanic Resources Maritime Authority, and Mr. June Pakalando, chief law from our Department of Justice, for the extensive experience they've been doing in helping the FSM negotiate our maritime boundaries and in the filing of extended continental shelf claims at the UN Commission on the Limits of Continental Shelves. Thank you for the opportunity of giving the FSM to a dialogue on this important topic. Thank you all for the opportunity. Alangan.